I always used to say, if you don't let me down, I won't let you down. Are you the husband? Yes. Nice We've been married 53 years, man. I met Doreen when I arrived the Friday, the 28th of February, 1956. I was born in Dominica when England opened and said, all the West Indies can come to the mother country and work. You cold, you're all right, you're not cold. You're not feeling. She was a very good looking girl and she had lovely wavy hair. She was like a model. Oh, I think I, <laughs> the very first week I, I, I saw her, I knew I was in love with her. Oh. Yeah, careful, careful, love, careful. Oh, you soon will be better. She never tell her parents anything because Black men well, was not the sort of thing that young ladies take home in those days in a hurry. We used to go at the Grosvenor Gardens, lie on the grass there, and people used to watch us and say, look, look, look. Look, they're holding hands and uh, look, look, he kissing her, you know. After six months, she finds she was expecting. She said she's pregnant. And how did her family react? Very badly. The big sister did tell her, well, you could give the child away and pretend nothing happened. So when she eventually told her mom, was chaos, <laughs> chaos. After the child was born, the mom make up her mind that uh, there's nothing she can do about it. We was not going to split. The one thing that was very difficult with us, nobody wanted to look after a mixed child. So Dorin never worked. He had to look after our children. It was a hard time because in those days, the people used to say, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. Whenever there was a school occasion, mum and dad would be the only mixed race couple there. Everyone else was white, because Streatham was very Anglo-Saxon back in the day. I remember one time we wanted to go on a, one of those boats that cruise up and down the Thames. And I think there was a bit of a scene. And I think Dad, he got into a row because I think the captain of the boat wasn't too happy or because they were a mixed race couple. And maybe one or two people complained. And eventually they asked Dad to leave. My dad wouldn't put up with any nonsense. I think he just told the bloke, stuff your boat and we'll go somewhere else. <laughs> People would get very uptight and make snide remarks, but Mum would never let us see that she was upset. They went from good times, bad times, but they always stuck together, and they were happy together ten years ago. And they found a murmur on her heart, so they decided she'd have to have an operation. After the operation, she was never the same. She was not so joyful. That wasn't mum. She was usually so vigorous and strong. So to see her so weak and poorly and unable to care for herself, it was upsetting. I give her my promise that I will never send her to her home. She will, she will stay here with us, whatever. It was amazing to see them together because mum started calling dad Andy. And she'd never called dad Andy before. It was always Andrew. I gave her her Weetabix, and she had four spoonful, and the fifth one, I noticed she wouldn't take it. And she opened both eyes and looked at me and closed them, and she was gone. 
when she was gone. I hold her hands. Then I call Chris. I said, Mommy's gone, you know. And that was that. Very lonely. Very lonely, and uh, that's how it goes. She's gone. To have a marriage that lasts 60 years, I think most people can only dream of having that kind of relationship. Thank you.